Hey, welcome back guys. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and set up our React Native project. So for us to get started, you're going to need to have Node.js installed on your system. So if you're on Windows or Mac or Linux, make sure you have Node.js installed. If you don't, come over here, download any of these. Uh, mostly we'll be downloading the recommended for most users, the LTS version. So once you have it, you're going to be able to have NPM on your system. So NPM is uh, the Node Package Manager, and that's what we use to manage all the project dependencies. So once you have that, you're going to need to have Android Studio because when developing for Android, we're going to need a lot of things to be able to make an Android application. So we need the Android SDK. Now to work with the SDK, we need to have the Android Studio installed. And that's the one that gives us an interface to manage the SDK. So come over here, download the suitable one for your system. Also, there is the React Native documentation. This is where you want to, to go when you're going to, to get started. So when you go to the getting started section, you're gonna see that they have a lot of relevant information that's really good to help you get uh, started. Now we are going to be mostly interested in the setting up the environment. Now, when you come here, you're gonna see that you have multiple ways you can set up the React Native project. So we will see if something like the expo cli but for us we are going to be working with the react native cli and that's because we want to have control over everything we'll be doing so we will be actually working with uh, native code sometime but that's going to be like two percent of the time but for the most part you're going to be writing our regular sweet javascript okay so to get started you're going to need to come over here but i'm on a mac but if you're on windows you're going to need to click there and they are going to show you what you're going to need to do. Now, if you're on if if you're on Windows and you want to make iOS apps, then it might not then so if you're on Windows, you can't make iOS apps and you're going to need a Mac to be able to write apps that run on uh, on iOS. So on Windows, you can literally write the app. Of course, it would be able to run on on iOS, but you won't have a way to test it. So maybe if you're on a team and someone has an iOS device, uh, an iOS, maybe if you're on a team and someone has a Mac, then you can write on Android and maybe they test, which is entirely hectic. So what you want to do is focus on Android and develop only on Android until it's the app is completely working really good on Android and maybe then you can transfer it over to the Mac if you don't own one. I know there are some other options that you can maybe borrow a Mac online and use that to test. So Google app a solution if you really have to make it for iOS and you don't have a Mac. But otherwise we are going to start here. So I'm on a Mac, so we're going to need this. So I already have Node and Watchman, but if you don't, just go ahead and install those. If you're on Windows, you don't need to do that. Follow your instructions for your system. Now, when you're done, you're going to be having something like this. So here I'm gonna bring up my Android Studio. So once you have installed Android Studio for your system, you can run it and you're going to have something like this. Now, what we are mostly interested in, you want to go to configure and then click on SDK manager. Now here on the setup instructions, they're going to show you the things you need. So you need the SDK, you need the SDK platform and also the, the virtual device. So you're going to go to SDK tools, make sure you have those. So check the build tools, the emulator, the SDK tools, and you might need to install this because this helps you this helps speed up your emulator if you're testing on a, an emulator device. Other than that, if you want to set up the virtual device, you're going to need to go to configure AVD manager. And here you will find a list of all your, all your virtual devices. Now, initially you won't have any. So if you don't, you're going to need to create one, go through this, these steps. It's just straightforward. Click next. Then you may not have system image to install there go ahead and install one once go ahead and download one once it downloads then you can click in it and then it's going to go ahead and create for you the simulator now go through these options i would advise you keep only the the default ones so once you're done you can click finish and it's here now i can start it so when i click that it's gonna launch up and this is the device all right so other than that, you will be good for now. So for us to now create a project, I'm going to go to, I'm going to open up VS Code. So let me bring it up over here, get a new window here. So here is my VS Code. Let me maximize it so that we get a better view. I'll also have to increase my font a bit. 
so you guys can see properly now i'm going i'm opening up the terminal here so i'm going to see it into my desktop so in the desktop i'm going to create a project here now when we install node.js and npm you're going to have access to something called npx so, so instead of us installing react native and using it to create the project we can run the React Native CLI on the fly without actually installing it using npx. So here we can do npx React Native, React Native, then write in it, and then the name of the project. So this project I'm gonna call it RN Contacts, and then I'm gonna click Enter. What that's gonna do is it's gonna basically create our React Native project set up all the files we need, set up all the project dependencies we need to start creating our project. Okay, so now it's done. You will notice that it went ahead to basically create the project, it downloaded the, the default template for the projects. And then here you see it was installing the CocoaPods dependencies. These are specifically for iOS. So the iOS dependencies we need to work with. Then after it got done and we can now continue to run the project. So I'm going to CD into the project. So I'm going to CD into RN contact. So in there, I'm going to open this in VS code. So I'm going to do a code dot here that you can see the folders we have. So once it opens up, you see that we have the initial project template here. Now going over this, we have the basic yarn block file so these are basically our packages so in so we have the initial dependencies that we use so we have react and react native as we may guess and then we have the dev dependencies babel that's used to transpile the latest versions of java of javascript syntax and then we have the bubble runtime basically those work together es lint for linting bubble jest this is for meant for testing and uh, we have the Metro Bundler preset. So this w helps us work with the dev server. And also we have the React test renderer, which is basically a way to test React components. Now we have the preset, this one. Now we have a just config. This is for testing, don't worry so much about that. But in the scripts, we have the script to run the Android, the Android app, the iOS app, the one to start the dev server, the one to test and the one to lint. Now I'm gonna open up my terminal here. Now, when you open it up, it's gonna be basically empty and we can run any of these scripts. But uh, right here, we need to see how to run the project. So for us to run to run it, I'm gonna run it on iOS by running yarn, then iOS, like this. So yarn iOS. So what's gonna do now, it's, it's gonna go ahead and uh, open up the project on the iOS simulator. The one that's default so i'm gonna minimize the project here then i'm gonna bring it down so you see that uh, it went ahead to launch the iphone 11 so it's actually launched on another screen let me bring it here so here it is okay let's see so now it's building the app uh let's give it some time as we talk over the the files we have initially so here we have the app JSON. Here we can have any config that we want to use anywhere. But initially there is the but initially there is the app display name. This is what will show on the on the phone. And then the app JS is basically the entry file to our project. Now here is where we will be bringing in everything that we will have configured in our app. This will be the entry file. All right. So we have the Watchman. Don't worry about this. This is for the dev server prettier for formatting these are for git also the flow config is for types but don't worry about that eslint is setting up eslint basically eslint configuration for linting and then in the ios this is all the our ios files then the file we are going to be working mostly in will be the pod file this is where we install the native modules for ios we have the android so in android we have the normal android project the one you would have if you created a native android project now here we'll be working in here but it's not gonna be a lot as you guys will see don't so don't worry most about this we will, all, we will only be dealing with the files we will need so at that point we'll talk more about them all right now this is the test the test folder so in here we have the initial test to check if the app is working fine so this is where we'll write all our initial tests but I guess I'll be making 
series about react native testing in the future so don't worry about that for now all right so when it's done you will notice that it's gonna open up another window this is where the metro process would be so if we have like console logs in app they're gonna log in here but you don't need to stop this so have it running somewhere also it opens up on the simulator and you can see that we have our basic react native project now to run it on android you want to do yarn android so it's going to be able to first compile it of course so initially it's going to take a while to be able to run for the first time but the subsequent builds will be faster as you'll see here okay so let's hold on a bit I'm not sure if i even have an simulator running I don't know why it's running it oh i have a device plugged in Alright, so what happened here is the app didn't actually run on the virtual device. That's because it ran directly on my physical device. Now, I'm going to open up the program called Visor like I showed you earlier. So I'm going to open it up. Then I can bring view here. And you should be able to see my phone on the screen. So just a minute. And yeah, so you can see that on my phone, on my physical device, I have the welcome to React uh, basically a project there. But other than that, if you wanted to run it on iOS on an Android simulator, I'm going to open up the Android Studio. So guys, you can see that using an, a, an, a physical device is a good option because your computer doesn't have to go through the hassle of running Android Studio, the simulator. So if you have an Android phone, just plug it in, go to settings and then go to developer options. Make sure you turn on developer options. So if you don't have the physical device, you can come here and then you open a project. So I'm going to look for the, so you can go to your files. Then I'm going to look for the project we just created. So the one we created is RN contacts. Then you want to click on the Android folder. So once you click that, you can click open. Then here for you to view the files properly, you want to click the project view. So in there you have your Android project. So here, it's gonna go ahead and build the project using the Gradle build system. So make sure it first finishes here. Now mine is done. So once it's done, you can open it up like this. But right now my phone is connected, so I'm going to choose another device. So let me choose this pixel simulator, then click run this here. Or if you don't have a physical device, of course, it would be booting up on your on your your default simulator if you have default emulator if you have one setup okay so you see here it's installing let me remove visor so we have one thing to look at so it's booting up so you can see that now it's connecting to the local dev server and then yeah we have it running on our emulator so now if you go to the project we can come to the app.js and clean it up so i'm gonna come over here and actually remove everything so let me remove everything inside the JSX. So I now have the scroll view. Let me also remove it. Here I'm gonna have the text and say hello world. Okay. Now if we come back to the project, it's gonna reload. You can see hello world over here. On the on the iOS simulator, if we come over here, you see that we have hello world over here. So that's it. That's it for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you found it helpful, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.